regular axe versus camping axe versus battle axe. Greetings, I'm Shad, and I'm out here in the Shadlands doing some adventuring. And while I've been doing that, there is something that stands out to me often that I think is overlooked a lot in fantasy. And it's that one of the largest and longest things that you do when you're an adventurer is not the fighting monsters or getting loot or delving through dungeons, it's the traveling. And interestingly enough, you end up needing to collect a lot of firewood. Sometimes you need to build shelters. And one of the most useful tools you can do that is, of course, the axe. And the default axe that adventurers carry is the battle axe. And that makes me wonder as to how effective would a battle axe be at the more mundane sides of adventuring, say, survival craft and just chopping up wood and things. So we're going to have a look at that. But before we do, I need to tell you about this video's sponsor, which is Audible. This is legitimately one of the best sponsors I could ever get because it's something I use all the time. Audiobooks are a phenomenal kind of entertainment medium. And I find it bizarre when people say they can't get into audiobooks, because to me that's like saying you can't get into film. There's definitely a genre or an audiobook that you are going to love. And they're so convenient when you're traveling, you can have them on your phone, they just brilliant. In my opinion, audiobooks are one of the great entertainment mediums of the modern day. And if you haven't dived into them, I really feel you're missing out. Because no matter what genre you're into, there's almost a guaranteed fact that there will be an audiobook you will love. And the quality of the stories that you get access to are brilliant. And Audible is the best way to get into it because the cost of your monthly subscription is cheaper than the cost of the audiobook itself. And for your monthly subscription, you not only get an audiobook credit, you can get any audiobook on the catalog, but also gives you the Audible Plus catalog, which gives you access to thousands upon thousands of audiobooks. And it's brilliant. All you have to do is go to www.audible.com forward slash shadowversity. Or if you're in the US, you text Shadowversity to 500, 500 and you get all those things. You'll get your first audiobook for free and the Audible Plus catalog. And that's not just books. These are also self-help books. There are sleep tracks. There's even access to podcasts and things. And you get all of them, okay? All of them straight away, as well as your first audiobook free. I would suggest my own audiobook. Yes, I'm an author. My book is Chronicles of Everfall, Shadow of the Conqueror. And I highly suggest that one. And you can get it for free if you go to www.audible.com forward slash Shadowversity, or if you're in the US, you text Shadowversity to 500 500. My novel is an epic fantasy with an in-depth magic system, very confronting characters, and an engaging story. So do go check it out. Thank you for Audible for sponsoring this video. And now let's go find out how good a battle axe really is a chopping wood. One of the first things you're gonna notice between a battle axe and a regular wood cutting axe is the shape of the blades, okay? Uh, battle axes are very thin blades to reduce the weight. And right now, yeah, the wood cutting axe is much heavier than the battle axe. This gives me far more control when I'm striking with it, all right? Uh, and it's therefore more maneuverable, easier to manipulate and get into the right positions on your opponent. So massive advantage with uh, just using and swing around with a battle axe. That's what they're made for, hence why they're thin. This is heavier and cumbersome, and it's not even a full size one. This is just a comparable size one, okay? Uh, but why are wood cutting axes shaped like this as opposed to a battle axe like that? Well, as you might imagine, it's a split apart wood. And just to show you how effective they are, I brought my full size one to uh, just give us a standard point of reference. So wood cutting axes like this, even though they have an edge on and we've recently just sharpened and they're not razor sharp, they're basically, you know, not even, cut, I would almost call them blunt, but they certainly have an edge and you'll cut on them. But this, is going to split apart the wood, not necessarily by cutting, but by wedging it apart, and it becomes very easy. So, the utility of an axe, right? Let's compare that to an axe that is smaller. Still a wood cutting one, but this again has the right shape to help split apart this wood. So, let's give it a go. Decent, okay not as effective as the big two-hander, did the job. So let's compare it to the battle axe, but I also have camping axe here. 
Now, this camping axe has an interesting property. It's actually quite thin on the axe head, but it has a more gradual taper to help split apart the wood. And so I think the camping axe will actually do quite well as a wood cutting axe, but what's interesting, the properties and weight is actually more comparable. The camping axe is more comparable to the battle axe. And so this might not actually be a interesting comparison where the battle axe can work as well as a wood cutting axe, but that this camping axe actually might work really well as a battle axe. Let's see how we go. All right, so going with a camping axe here, and uh, this is one of the pieces of wood I split before. Uh, so it has the same width, but not the same, you know, uh, length, if that makes sense. All right, well, let's give this one a go. Ah! Works well. Okay. Now the one we've all been wanting to find out. The battle axe. Let's give this a go. Ah! Happened exactly as I was expecting. Because the axe head is so thin and doesn't have a gradual taper, it gets wedged in the wood far easier. Now, if there was a taper to help, you know, split apart this wood like a wedge, probably would have been able to split it quite well. Get it dug in decently deep. Let's give it another go. I'll be very lucky to hit the exact same spot if I'm actually going to be aiming offside a bit. Uh, there we go. Ah, not bad. I did the job. Split off a little bit, but if you've had any experience chopping wood, you'll know one of the things that affect it is the thickness of the wood. And so <laughs> I am very dubious if even the camping axe or the battle axe will get through something this thick. By the way, this is hardwood, okay? So it's not thin pine. There's only one way to find out. Ah! Not a chance. So now with a piece of wood that's much thicker, I'm gonna go back to the big two handed one, which is made for it, and watch how much easier this gets through this piece of wood. Ah! Much easier, okay? Again, it's, it's heavier, it's got the uh, wedge wedging effect, and so it can split wood. The question is, right, is uh, when you're out adventuring and you need a camp, and you have some survival things that you need to do, will you actually be splitting wood? Not necessarily. I think you'll actually be chopping it. And uh, that's another test we're gonna need to try out. But before we do that, I do wanna give the camping axe a go at one that is much thicker. To see if this has any better chance. Honestly, if we're being fair, we'll go to the, the more one-handed you know, a regular wood cutting axe to see how we go against a piece of wood like this. Ah! Aha! See? This had just as much difficulty getting through almost as the battle axe. Okay, so same block of wood. The regular cutting axe that was not two-handed had more trouble getting through it. Now the camping axe. Ah! Nah, this is so much thicker. And so, oh, man, it is jammed in there good. So one of the limitations that we're running into here is not necessarily the dimensions of the axe head here because the smaller one had trouble getting through. It was actually more about leverage and weight where of course the bigger, you know, two-handed wood axe has a much better chance of splitting apart something thicker and denser. And so you might be wondering then, well, could a two-handed battle axe be better at this? Possibly, this one to try out, I don't have one on me at the moment, but the other thing that we need to consider is that when it comes to battle axes, one-handed battle axes were far, far more common than two-handed battle axes. If you want to look at the official two-handed battle axes, you'll be looking at the Dane axe, or you'll be looking at the pole axe. But in terms of the fantasy two-handed double-bitted axe that we see Gimli using, historically, no, didn't exist for the most part, didn't exist. There were some examples, but they're more decorative than any. Anyway, so one more go, battle axe against thicker wood. So let's, let's try it out. Ah! No go. Okay, but remember, would you actually be splitting wood if you're going camping or adventure survival? 
not necessarily. You might actually be needing to chop more instead of split. And so let's test this one at just chopping so because this is what that's what you'd really do. You'd get branches in your arm and then you just might want to split them apart. Battle axe against branches that you just pick up. Ready? Ah! That did pretty good. It did pretty good. Trying another one. Let's compare that. Now this one is a bit thicker, granted, but we'll compare it to the camping axe. Ah! Pretty good as well. Pretty good. And now the wood cutting one. Oh, ah, that's significant. Let me go back to uh, the smaller diameter one. Let's see how well the wood cutting one does. This is the equal diameter to what the battle axe hit. Let's try and hit it with the wood cutting. Ah, did pretty good, did pretty good. But we did run into a little bit of trouble there. And it's that when it comes to cutting, the axe head here might not be optimized to be able to cut well because it becomes thicker and it's wanting to split it apart. That can be advantageous when you just want to split it. Well, you want to try and cut into it. It varies. Let's try a thicker bit of wood for uh, the battle axe. So this one here, and let's see how well it does. Ah, had trouble, but honestly, so did the regular one-handed wood cutting axe. Give it one more go, see how we get, how we do. Not bad, not bad. So in conclusion, I actually think, yes, a battle axe is actually quite functional and effective as a wood cutting axe, even with its limitations. And as we did find out, it has more difficulty splitting apart wood because it's got a thinner axe head. But I think it will do the job, okay? Especially just collecting wood, you're not splitting it apart. You're not trying to chop down a tree. Although that is something perhaps we might check out in another video. Very interesting though, very intriguing. And uh, thank you for watching, I hope you've enjoyed. And of course, I hope to see you in the next video on Shadowversity. So until that time, farewell. This axe, I actually believe, is not made for such heavy gear use. I think this is meant to be more ornamental, even though it can do the job, but the axe head is just a little bit loose. Can you, can you see how much are you? But it's a little bit loose now, and I won't be risking it on wood again. Because um, again, I don't think it's made for it. Uh, don't try it at home, okay? If you're actually gonna, you know, try battle axe, make sure it's properly made, half to dried and got well, correct wood and everything. Uh, so Ben, come here. Uh, we have a, a fatality. Uh, no, it's not a fatality. Is a death. What's yes. an injury? It's um, mm. you know, in Star Trek we have so many cash. I don't know. It's only a flesh wound. Flesh wound. But the axe is now drawn blood. <laughs> oh, it was an accident. Unfortunately, when he was handing me the axe. But um, an axe. Do you want to? Do you want to show? An accident. <laughs> do you want to show what happened? You were handing yes, me the axe, so trying I to went be. to hand the axe. Trying to be, you know safe by handing me this yep. end and the thing is i was really getting my game on because of how easily i removed the axe so i went to pull my hand away and go Hur! and then i and this is freshly sharpened by myself <laughs> so I, I know it did a good job <laughs> um but yes and that's what happened so but it, ha it has tasted blood mm. the blood of ben do we call it the ben slayer yes the Ben Slayer. I might be a snake wrestler, but this thing is the Ben Slayer. <laughs> so, don't worry, it was, uh, by the way, it, probably, it looks way worse with that than what it yeah. is. No, this is just to keep pressure on it to stop it bleeding. It's actually fine. So it's a, it's a light flesh wound.